Okay, guys, today we are going to talk about making some naturally fermented Asian slaw. So when I say naturally fermented, I mean kisali kupus or sauerkraut, whole head sauerkraut. If you want to know how to make this, I'm going to leave a little link where you guys can uh, uh, see my little series on how to make whole fermented sauerkraut. So when making this, um, because the sauerkraut's a little bit soft, I use a mandolin, which is this device here, to slice the sauerkraut. You wanna try to get this as paper thin as possible. The sauerkraut's soft, so you can see I'm, I'm pulling bits and pieces off here, left and right, and you're gonna lose, estimate anywhere between 15 to 20% of your uh, uh, whole head sauerkraut when you're making this with a mandolin just because the kraut's soft. So here you can see it's nice and thin. If it comes out thick, the problem is you're gonna, you're gonna kinda choke on it uh, because it's too thin. So here's a small head I, uh, I put through the mandolin and you can see I'm just, I'm trying to separate all the bits. I'm loosening it up a little bit. I wanna make sure that there's no big chunks in there because nobody likes to uh, uh, get a big chunk of sauerkraut uh, in their mouth. So I'm going to put five radishes in here. And again, I'm going to use the mandolin. Be careful. This thing will take your finger off without, I mean, it's that quick. Um, so please be careful if you're going to use a mandolin on this. But it's the absolute best way to do it because everything gets cut nice and thin. So five radishes. I'm going to use half a red onion. And I just chop it uh, relatively fine. I don't want it too fine, but I don't want it too coarse either. Uh, chop it up and throw it in there and I will say my kids are not fans of sauerkraut shocker right uh, they like it in stuffed cabbage rolls sarma uh, but they are not fans of it when we make it just in salad so the reason I came up with this is to try to get them to eat some uh, some of the sauerkraut and not to mention this has a ton of other vegetables in here uh, you can see I'm going to put a, a whole jalapeno in here, but I'm going to take out the seeds and the uh, capsaicin stem so it's not too spicy. It gives it a very mild kick. Um, and normally I would add a, a whole red jalapeno sliced in the mandolin with the seeds to give it a little bit more kick. I, I make two bowls, one for me and one for the kids. Um, but in this case, they didn't have whole jalapenos in the... Uh, grocery store the red jalapenos which I like uh, so I pulled out a habanero which is uh, a whole lot hotter than a red jalapeno I didn't add it to this but I'm gonna show you guys here in a second um, I would absolutely add it to this if it was for myself uh, but not with the kids eating it but as you can see there's gonna be a ton of different vegetables that go in here so we're gonna add a little bit of a red bell pepper so this is extremely healthy for you. Uh, it'll sit in the fridge easily two to three days without any problem. I personally think it gets better the second day. So if you're going to have a party, uh, you can easily make this the night before, let it sit in the fridge, mix it before you serve it, and you should be good to go. Uh, so I'm going to add a, a red bell pepper in here. The one thing I did forget, I normally shred carrots. And uh, for whatever reason, I completely forgot to add the carrots into this uh, uh, into this batch of Asian slaw, uh, but you know the carrots add a little bit of sweetness. It it still turned out fine, absolutely fine. Um, so the next thing I'm going to throw in here, well, normally like I said I would throw in the habanero, but I'm not going to do it with this one. Uh, so green scallions, uh, I usually just do about a half a bunch to a whole bunch of green scallions. Adds a really nice uh, color to the, to the salad, uh, but also adds a great crunch and also some uh, nice light onion flavor uh, to kind of offset the, uh, the red onion. So about a half a bunch of uh, cilantro relatively coarsely chopped. You don't want to leave big leaves in here. You can see I, I probably ended up mincing it a little bit too much, but um, 
that's okay. It still uh, gives it a lot of flavor, and I probably, honestly, could have used a little bit more cilantro in this one. Now, here's the key ingredient. Absolutely have to add fresh ginger to this salad. This is what, what gives it a little bit of that Asian zing. And secondly, as we all know, fresh ginger is extremely healthy for you. I mean, I put it in my chicken soup. Uh, I, I try to use it wherever I can. It's very good for you. And I wanna show you guys, this is a microplane. So the microplane, um, it does take a long time. I'm not gonna lie. This, this takes a long time and, and your uh, forearm is going to be a little sore when you're done. Um, but it, it shreds the ginger so fine that you don't even uh, get pieces of it in your mouth, right? It's, it's uh, uh, emulsified almost when you finish up with the ginger. And I did about a stick and a half, uh, the, let's call it an ounce and a half of ginger in this salad. Um, which gave it a, a great flavor. So here, normally, okay, I'd add a little bit of spicy, but the kids would cry, so I'm not gonna do it. All right, so these are white sesame seeds, and these are black sesame seeds. Uh, add to taste, I'm gonna put about a tablespoon in, um, uh, in the salad. They're really more for the crunch and the color. Okay, sesame oil. This is another key ingredient. And you can see how small of a container I got. Sesame oil will go rancid very quickly. Uh, raw organic honey. So any kind of honey, and it's probably, you know, all in, I did a little bit of an adjustment, but all in, I probably added about three tablespoons of honey because my sauerkraut was extremely sour. So the sweet offsets some of the sour. I'm adding a little bit of rice wine vinegar, and now you just gently toss, dare I say, the salad. Uh, and the reason you do this, you want to separate if there's any pieces, like for instance, the radish gets stuck together. You want to incorporate all those flavors. You want to make sure everything is nicely separated, and then you have to taste it. Because I'll be honest with you, uh, mine was missing a little something, so I went back, whoop, I forgot. Actually, that was something I did forget. Olive oil, about a quarter cup of olive oil, plus or minus taste. Without the olive oil, you don't create that nice emulsified dressing at the bottom of the uh, uh, of the salad, and it adds a little bit of viscosity to it too, so it's a nice mouthfeel. And olive oil just tastes delicious. So I taste it, and I realize I'm missing a couple things, so what I need to go do is add a little bit of honey. Uh, because it was a little bit light on honey. And then also, I believe I added a little bit of vinegar uh, and some more olive oil to the, uh, to the mix. So there's the vinegar, the olive oil, not much, just a little, and a little bit more honey. And then I mixed it up, and guys, let me tell you, it is that good. This would go perfect with a brisket in the summertime. Um, any kind of fish, some chicken off the grill. I mean, it is fantastic. Oh, mm. oh my God. Yep. That good, guys. It's that good. Try it. You will not be disappointed.